Roots rappers versus back home. Three of the standouts are Elsewhere, Terra Firma, and the Illustrator. Elf is Shona. Terra and Illustrator are Debele. In my ignorance, I wonder if there will be tension in the cipher. In the States, hip-hop was born as liberation music, a soundtrack for the urban struggle birthed by DJ Cool Herc, a Jamaican immigrant who scraped dancehall flavor from the streets of Kingston and waxed it on to records in the Bronx. In Zimbabwe, my students tell me that most people see hip-hop as bougie, a flashy American import with candy-painted imperialism. Here in Zimbabwe, dancehall is the music of the hood, which kind of makes coming all the way to Africa, to Zimbabwe, to teach a musical genre founded upon drum beats and inspired four decades ago by Caribbean and West African dance music, kind of like teaching glaciers about the rhythms of river water. We preach into the source. Now, after two weeks, our final performance is in Glen Nora Township on a stage built beneath a giant tent and 500 locals waiting wide-eyed. Now, things haven't gone exactly as planned all week. The Wi-Fi has been spotty. The equipment won't sync. The battery in my portable speaker has a lifespan of Vanilla Ice's career. Tonight, I got a migraine made of 808 drums, and my head is a shot put in my palm. I cover my right eye with one hand and squint with the other. I see Elsewhere, Terra Firma, and the Illustrator take the stage. The three linked up in class and made a song together in Shona, Ndebele, and English. It's a trilingual offering in the church of microphones. It sounds like flowers on unmarked graves like bullets decomposing. I cover my right eye with one hand and watch them build a temple out of lungs and air, storm clouds gathering in my cheek. I cover my right eye with one hand and I'm slick Rick with his eye patch at age 11 staring out a D-train window learning to look at the world in rhyme. I realize this ain't no classroom or project or program. This is a cipher in all of its magic, and I'm in my element. I've never felt more hip-hop than right here, right now, in Harare, Zimbabwe. My speech swerves and skips until my cadence curves my lips into a homage. My knowledge broken and put back together like the Fuji's. Never feeling I'm polished, I'm flawless. As Chris Wallace rocking a Fuji sweater. Tupac with a bandana knotted tighter than all of the hearts of hip-hoppers gripping light as the night of his death in Nevada. Listen, I'm cool Herc in the kitchen with his hands on two plates. Juggling surfa suzza surfa suzza suzza and grit. Like a South Bronx merry-go-round, proving we ain't spinning different records, just remixing the same song. And I've been wrong. If any part of me came to Zimbabwe hoping to find hip-hop as if it wouldn't exist until I stuck my flag into it. Didn't exactly know what I was getting myself into. Nobody told me that hip-hop could be the Shona word for peace and the Bele for forgiveness that when spoken in both languages at the same time, it could summon the god of music, the god of dopeness the god of better tomorrows, and I can almost hear hip-hop herself saying, I told you so, can hear the queen calling to me kind of annoyed, like, ain't Grandmaster Flash teach y'all nothing? The tables can always turn. Somebody just got to be there to turn them. And dead, how y'all say I'm dead, fool? Ain't I always been right on time? Ain't I been chameleon medicine? Whatever you needed me to be to heal all your brethren to patch a gaping wound the size of a crack house or a trailer park festering of a bleeding city trying desperately to clot? I've been rebel music and party music, been matchmaker when lonely shoulders met boom boxes, shell toes met tube socks and flat tops, kissed cardboard every two blocks, told you paint your ideas on the train cars and think outside the box. I jimmy rigged the hood together with gold ropes and fat laces, a back brace for cats in a rat race, and I may have been sold out, spun round, pawned off, commodified, spotified, chopped, screwed, auto-tuned, and watered down, but not a day in my life have I ever been dead. Wow, <laughs> so like I said, uh, Dean, you nice. see why I like Kane and the way he spoke, the way he spit stuff and everything. He even referenced a couple uh-huh. of folks that I know you are familiar with, like uh, Cool Herc and uh, a couple of the other legends from New York and everything. Yes, so you heard yes. that he even referenced them and everything. So yeah, you see why I'm a big fan of Kane and the work that he's done. He just does some amazing things. Um, Troy, did you get a chance to hear him as well? And I've got one other guest that I want to bring in, and there might even be one other one that might be calling as well. But uh, did you get a chance to hear what he had to say in the um, hip-hop lyrics that he was reciting and everything? And uh, how would uh, how would your kids uh, think of his work? Oh, man, phenomenal, brother, man. It was an honor just to be here. I, I didn't know whether to clap, snap, holler, say amen, <laughs> all at the same time, brother. It was, it was dope, man, like – uh, we, we, you know, we're young men for Christ, man, but we, we, you know, the Bible says to make a joyful noise. It didn't say how. 
so we admonish our young people to use all of their gifts and talents, whatever it may be. Um, we wrote a rendition to God's plan. I thought it was rightfully so. Um, and, and a lot of the kids, they want to be rappers. So I say, hey, let's, let's we look at uh, as rap as poetry to a beat. You know, and, and really being able to put your feelings down on paper, man. So that was dope, man. Like we, we, we really encourage stuff like that. And I know kids that um, that we encourage and we mentor would would love to be in that atmosphere, and we would really encourage it um, because it, it, again, it tells your story and it allows you to tell your story in your way, man. So that was really awesome, man. Appreciate that. Um, I was curious, and I want to bring Skylar into the conversation as well. Skylar has been interested and been holding on for a while. So um, Skylar Bird is a uh, entertainer also. But uh, Skylar, did you hear any of the performance, or have you been listening? And tell us a little bit about what you've got going on. And after you do that, I want to hear from all three of y'all how y'all think the arts in general are being handled. Because it's of my opinion, and we've talked about it on this show, that unfortunately – um, through our education system, and I know you've been doing a lot of work, Kane, in this area that uh, some of our educators are not doing enough of teaching critical thinking, which is the art is a very important part of, in my mind and everything. So I just wanted to know you know how you think we're doing in terms of respecting the art and respecting culture in general. And before we do that, I do want to bring Scala in so she can tell a little bit about their background. Hi, I'm Scala. Um, where do I start? Um, Come from a church background. Um, I'm an upcoming actress. When I was in high school, I did all theater for four years. Um, I've been in multiple musicals. Um, I was the, witch, the Wicked Witch in The Wizard of Oz. Um, I wrote skits for churches and got played, paid for it, and I was only 13. Um, it's just always been a passion. Um, I was seven. And I just, I used to love to sing weird things. I went through a voice change. I was pregnant. I'm all women. I know my voice sounds crazy, but I'm all women. I went through a voice change when I was pregnant with my first daughter. And um, and I really don't sing as much, but um, I, like, I take my hat off to you because you are very talented. Like, I've been around in studios. I've, I'm very familiar with, um, the, the rap history and underground rappers, and that was very good. Like, that was awesome, you know. So um, I take my hat off to you, and, and expressing words, and, and that's what rap is all about, your format, how you express yourself, and how you and how you, and how you bring forth the music, you know. And, and I just, I, that was very good. I had my phone on mute, but I was I was rooting for you the whole time. Like, that was very good. So... <laughs> Uh-huh, and tell folks also, Skylar, where you're at, because like I said, I know not everybody's listening, and I didn't do a good job of introducing, introducing but tell folks, like I said, we know Troy's in Raleigh and uh, Kane's in Los Angeles, so I didn't say where you were, so if you let the listeners know where you were located at also. Okay, I'm located in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Um, I called for my work phone, so that's why I call it said a 214 number. So, um, But yes, I'm located in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, but I'm actually from Tarboro, but I've been down here for like 16 years, like, so they adopted me. So everything that I've been doing, um, John Costa Blockers in Raleigh, North Carolina, I auditioned for them. I actually got the call back. I just ended up moving to Temple, um, Temple, Florida. So I never, um, you know, got a chance to work with them. Um, I'm locked in with Explore Talent. Right now I'm with BBD Entertainment. I'm working on my second film. Um, the first film I did was, um, Mama's Baby Boy, and I was a successful businesswoman who was just looking for a good time. Um, and now the second movie I'm in is actually kind of interesting because I've been around, you know, guys, um, I'm going to say hood guys, I guess, and, you know, people of of that type. So in this movie, I'm playing a detective that is, you know, that decides to take a turn for the bad. So, you know, I, I kidnap someone, and you guys have to see the movie. So if you ever have a chance, go to BBD Entertainment. We got a web page, and you can check out different actors and the movies and clips. And this is part two of Black Widows. So it's very interesting. Cool. 
Um, and that's the other thing. I meant to um, ask both Kane and Troy, and then we'll come back to the whole conversation about how we're doing in terms of respecting the arts and everything. But uh, Troy and Kane, if you both share how folks can reach out to you on social media and things of that nature and learn about the programs that way. Um, we'll start first with Troy, and then we'll come back to Kane. So, Troy, tell folks how they can learn about the program you've got, the name of the program, and just the ways that folks can reach out to you if they're interested in having maybe their kids involved. And are you doing stuff with kids outside of the Raleigh area? Because, like I said, I know you're in Raleigh, and a lot of these are kids you're working with through the barbershops and other things are in Raleigh, but I don't know if you're networking and connecting with people in other states and other parts of the world. So if you'll share that as well, that would be appreciated also. Absolutely, man. So I am Troy Jermaine Johnson, a.k.a. Mr. YM4C. We are in Raleigh, North Carolina. You can reach out on our website at www.ym4c.org. We're also on every social media platform. You can reach out to us on Instagram at at youngmen, the number four, Christ, or on Facebook at YM4C. That's YM, the number four, C. Um, as far as uh, reaching out beyond just the local level, we started our virtual mentoring. Uh, we now are mentoring young men and women. Uh, we have several clients in uh, Baltimore, uh, D.C. area, Florida, and we started that part of obviously having to pivot and shift because of COVID-19, but definitely wanted to continue to make that impact. So, yes, man, we're definitely uh, in, in full swing, man. Our motto is we working over here, man, and that doesn't stop just because of, of crisis or pandemic. That makes a lot of sense. Kane, tell folks how they can reach out to you and maybe some of the other projects you've got going on. I would also love to hear you talk, and I know you said you might have to jump off a little bit after eight or whatever, but I'd love to hear you talk a little bit more about the play because, like I said, that was a powerful piece that you did that's part of the play, but I want to know a little bit more how it came about and what the plans are for the play because you did have that run in New York City, but I don't know what you've got planned for that. And, of course, you mentioned that you've got a new CD coming out in the very near future, but I just want to uh, – if you could answer those questions, starting off with uh, how folks can reach you and some of the plans for the play and maybe a little bit of the history about the play. No doubt. Yeah, I'm, uh, my my uh, social media and everything is pretty pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, it's just uh, Kane Smigo, so that's K-A-N-E, like a walking cane except with a K, and then S as in Sam, M as in Mary, E, G, O, like go. Uh, so just my first and last name, no dots, no underscores, nothing. Just Kane Smigo at gmail dot com is my email, and then I'm at Kane Smigo on Instagram and Facebook. I, I don't, I'm not really a Twitter user, but uh, you know, every now and again I'll throw something up. Mostly Instagram and things like that. And then uh, my website is just KaneSmigo dot com. So uh, all pretty straightforward. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the show, uh, I had the, the premiere was in North Carolina, you know, got picked up and produced by uh, Playmakers Repertory Company, and uh, that was a, a big learning experience. My first, you know, kind of major theater show opportunity, working with a group of people and, you know, set designer and, uh, you know, lighting designer and all that was, it was a big learning curve for me. And then uh, I applied, like, like you had mentioned, uh, got into the United Solo Theater Festival. It's the largest one-person show theater festival in the world. It's in New York City. So I had a one night off Broadway back in October, and then the show was uh, picked up and produced for a 15 show run. I uh, was in uh, at the Detroit Public Theater, so I was in residence in Detroit for five weeks running that, and that was amazing too. I got to meet you know folks that uh, I had idolized as a kid, Jessica Care Moore, you know one of the, the poets that I grew up watching on Death Poetry Jam, and right. uh, she came out to my show and ended up uh, we ended up becoming you know good friends and. And, uh, and and spend a lot of time um, out there, you know, getting to know the community through her uh, and, and other kind of big players in the, in the Detroit art scene, which was great because I feel like Detroit had a lot of a lot of similarities and kinship with with North with uh, Durham, you know, it's just like small, close knit, but just powerhouse scene. So yeah, so that's that was the last move for the show, and I'm just you know trying to see if I can get it uh you know picked up by another theater in another city, maybe L. A. But, you know, who knows, in, in this moment right now, just trying to, to rebuild and, and plan for the future, and we'll see what happens once things open back up. Yeah, and I think things will open back up. I mean, like I said, we're hoping that it opens up hopefully by the summertime or the early fall, and if it opens up earlier, that would be wonderful. But, of course, everybody has to yeah. do that social distancing and try to do as best 
as we can in order to make it happen and this kind of thing because we're in uh, some trying times. So hopefully we'll get it going so that folks can get back to doing their performances on a regular basis. Um, you mentioned that you had done some work with youth and everything. Of course, Troy's got his thing going on. So yep, maybe yep. after we get.